Hello, I'm Professor Lou. Welcome to our live stream. Today, I am going to be drawing my guinea pigs alive using soft pastels. If you would like to grow as an artist and you can't afford an art class, we've got everything you need here at Art Prof, critiques, tutorials, and professional development. We're gonna get started with Jub Jub doing some gesture drawings because I don't know how long you're going to sit for me today, Jubby, and you're the most jumpy one of all. So let's just do some very fast <laughs> drawings. I don't know, maybe I'll have to entice you with a carrot or something, but whoa, okay, all right. Yeah, you definitely need a carrot. Come here, come here, come here. All right, do you want a carrot? Yeah, I think I think that'll keep you way more occupied. <laughs> yeah, that's that's better, Jobs. I like that. I would love it for all of you guys to draw along with me. If you don't want to deal with Jubby and his craziness, the links are in the video description below. I have reference photos of Jubby and Wheat and also Fluffy. So you guys can feel free to draw from those or if you want to <laughs> try to draw them live with me. That's also really fun. And I, I don't know how long Jubby is going to cooperate, although I'm thinking that this is probably going to keep him occupied for a short period of time. But hey, you know, I, I need the practice getting myself to react more quickly. So I hope you guys will draw along with me because, oh, it's been a while since I have drawn you guys. <laughs> I mean, Jubby's a spaz. He's definitely the crazy one in our house of guinea pigs. And I'm thinking I will have Fluffy do the long poses because he's way more chill than Jubby. I mean, the only reason Jubby's sitting still right now is because I gave him a carrot. I, I do not think it's gonna happen otherwise. So I'm just starting out small, very quick gestures, nothing substantial because I just wanna get myself up and moving. Oh, I am not in shape today, guys. I just got back. We spent spring break a couple hours outside of Salt Lake City, and I just feel like a big vegetable in terms of drawing. I just have not been doing it much. All right, that's a nice mess. Cool, let's do another one, guys. So remember, you guys, I would love for you to draw along with me. You can do it in any media you want. And I would love for you to hang out with me in the Art Prof Discord. Oh, you want another one? Let, let's see how long you can go without one. I don't know. I want to see if I can get your movements. I don't know, guys. Ah, I think he's going to run for it. Chubby, Chubby, come here. Oh, he looks, he, he's looking for something. Chubby, come here, come here. I think, no, 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 no. You're going to get into the webcam. Come here, come here. Here, why don't you have some celery? And you know, I'll, I'll position you over here. Uh, maybe over here. There we go. So that way I can get a different view. All right, now I'm looking at your butt. <laughs> That's okay. Here, why, why don't you turn this way, honey? Okay, there we go. Good. <laughs> and if you guys would like to use the reference photos, just go down to the video description below. And we have new photos of Fluffy, also old photos of Wheat and Jub Jub on the Flickr page. So you guys can definitely work with that. Oh, Chubby, I am not warmed up. And Jubby's difficult because he's got three colors. I feel like Fluffy's easier because he's only one color just easier to manage. This is a lot more to have to balance. I'm just thinking about blocking in patches of color for now and not even doing anything else. I mean, he's so defined by his colors. 
remember, this is just warm up, okay? And none of this is <laughs> meant to be any good right now. It's hard to do gestures with soft pastels, I will say. It's just, it's so messy. But maybe that's exactly what I need. And I do want to go like, oh, maybe gray is not a good option. Maybe I should stick with some browns like this. Oh, Jebby, come on. Are you already done? Oh, come on. Have a fit. Here we go. No, no, no. Jebby, come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. You guys, <laughs> he's not going to last very long. <laughs> we might have to switch to Fluffy pretty soon. <laughs> All right, I know, I know, you need more. Here you go, here. That's a nice big chunk that should keep you nice and happy, right? I keep you occupied. Oh, he's got like a little bit of pink on his nose. Do you guys see that? See, that's a nice little touch that you can add to your soft pestle drawings that typically does not get to happen if you're using something else. I do want to show my strokes a little bit more. Oh, let's try your celery jubs. Yeah. <laughs> he's some, of course, he's like ripping it to shreds. He always does this thing. Do you guys see this? He always puts his hand on the celery to hold it down and make sure that it doesn't. He's the only pig that does that. The other two, they just eat. <laughs> Nivedita says, what other pets do you have? Well, we have two other guinea pigs. We have Wheat and Fluffy. And we also have Gmo, who is an axolotl. I'll type that into the chat. Axolotl. I don't know if I can draw him live. He's in a big tank. We'll have to see at some point. <laughs> Vanessa says, is it yours? Oh, yes, he is. We've got three of them. Eliza says, how did you pick his name? How did we pick your name, Jubby? I can't remember. How can I not? I, I know Wheat. We named him Wheat because he's colored Wheat. I mean, Jubby is like an athlete. So yeah, who knows? <laughs> Neil says, aren't you afraid the food will be contaminated by the pastel dust? Nah, this is all the way over here. This isn't even close to Jubby. So I'm not that worried about that. Dusty Git for me says it's hard drawing something that just has one color. Oh no, I mean that's that's enough. <laughs> Trust me for sure. <laughs> oh my god, Jubby, you are just not gonna last very long. Okay, this is what we're gonna do, Jubby. We're gonna give you two big pieces here, like that. Okay. And you're just gonna chomp on that. And I'm gonna do like maybe another gesture drawing, <laughs> and that might be it for you. <laughs> Harley is asking, what are their favorite foods? You know, I should have brought some, but we just got back from out of town. But um, their absolute favorite food is dandelions. Oh, my God. It's nuts. I mean, he just like, no, 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 no. Jabby, look, here. Here, here. There you go. Yeah, stay here. Stay here. Yeah, don't go after the webcam. I don't want you on the webcam. <laughs> what, what? Are you bored? I just gave you some celery. Jubby, come here. Guys, just a warning. I don't know how. No, 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 no. Not getting on the webcam. Jubby, here. Oh, oh. No, we did get you some celery. Remember? Remember? Oh, Jubby. <sighs> Guys, I got to warn you. I don't know how much drive there's going to be <laughs> in today's stream. I'm going to do the best I can. Let's see if the if the dandelion. Jubby, Jubby, here. Look, dandelion. Look. My kids, their mother-in-law. She's so funny. I told her about how much they love dandelions and normally I'm lazy and I just go and I buy them at the grocery store and she goes and she like picks them outdoors. Here we go. Here he jobs. Maybe that'll keep you busy. Although he does do this thing where he just like sucks it down like so fast. So it doesn't stick around for very long. <laughs> All right, jobs. We got to make sure you look like more than a just of 
bunch of black blobs. So I'm going to try to be a little bit more daring with my strokes because you're not making it easy for me. <laughs> You see this? He, he just like sucks it down. It's, it's hilarious. I mean, it's like his whole world is that piece of dandelion. <laughs> it's really quite impressive. <laughs> Let's block in. Oh, geez, Jebby, are you serious? Oh my God. All right, carrot, carrot, carrot. Here we go. Let's do the carrot. Look at this. You're getting so spoiled, Jebby. I normally never let you have stuff like this. At least not in this one. No, Jebby, Jebby, look, look, look. Here, here, what's wrong? Don't, Jebby, oh, are you serious? Oh my God. Here, try this. <laughs> there we go. I didn't really, no, 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 no. <laughs> Come on, stay here. <laughs> Maybe he's getting tired of the food, I don't know. Jebby, just let me get in some highlights. Jebby, Jebby, come back. You're going to look like a big blob. Hey, 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 that's just a screen. <laughs> it's really not that interesting. Come here, come here. <laughs> Guys, I don't think he wants to eat anymore. I think we may have to um, switch to wheat because, as you guys can see, he's a little bit of a spaz. Right? Did you have enough? Are, are you done? No, no, that, okay. Guys, I, I think we need a guinea pig change, okay? <laughs> Talk amongst yourselves. I'm going to go get wheat. I bet you anything wheat is going to be a lot more cooperative. I did get like, what, three gesture drawings out of you, huh, Joby? All right. <laughs> I'll be right back, you guys. Um, I'll give you a topic to discuss. Um, who is hotter, Michael Fassbender or Hugh Jackman? <laughs> All right, guys, it's time for wheat. All right, he's way more chill. <laughs> Do you guys see wheat? Wheat is big. He's really big, guys. Oh, yeah. He, you guys, you see, he's got a totally different rhythm to him. Okay, wheat, I think you're going to actually make this doable for me. So now that I warmed up... I'm gonna start here. Oh, you're so chill compared to Jumpy, aren't you? Oh, yes, you are. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad that you guys liked Jubby. I knew his appearance was gonna be very short, and so that's why I decided to have him be first. <laughs> Madeka says, I think I'm going to draw the carrot that sits still. It absolutely does. <laughs> Lunar says, yeah, we saw what he did with the celery. Gave you just enough time to pick up the pastel. Exactly. <laughs> Anna is asking, why did you choose to adopt guinea pigs over other animals like cats and hamsters? Actually, my older daughter is obsessed with cats and she's so upset because we can't have a cat because my husband's allergic. And that is just, oh my God, you guys have no idea how upset she is about that. And so we can't have a cat for that reason. And I can't remember whose idea it was to get guinea pigs. It might've been my husband's. I mean, I had a guinea pig when I was a kid, but I only had one guinea pig and my mother hated it. And it wasn't really like a family pet. It, it was more just sort of my pet. And so it wasn't the same thing as this, which is really like a family affair, having these pigs. I mean, we have evenings. Those of you guys who have pets probably know what I'm talking about, where you just sit and you just stare at your pets. <laughs> you just like watch them for like hours on end. It's pretty funny. All right. We, I, I got to draw something that doesn't look like nothing. Okay. <laughs> Please help me out. Oh, this is hard. I guess this is, yeah, I guess I'll block in his bum. Yeah, that's what he needs something like that. I guess I'm torn because when I draw things like fur, part of me wants to block in the big shapes like I'm doing now, 
But the other part of me also wants to draw more of the individual forms. Like tell me in the chat, do you guys find fur hard to draw because of all those textures? I think that for me, that is quite challenging. All right, now wheat has like a really specific, it's not quite dark enough, this brown. Maybe what I'll do is block in like a big, I, I guess with the patterned pigs, it's more like I really have to knock in the pattern and then put in the shape of the fur. I guess with Fluffy, it's gonna be different because he's all white. Yeah, see, I was hoping Jubby would give me a little bit more time, but he really was not, he was not into it. <laughs> it was not fun for him. Wheat's also very, um, he's got like a lot of fur, like he sheds everywhere all the time compared to say Fluffy and Jubby who don't really do that so much, but he's always making a big mess. It is so fun to draw from life. You guys, as much as this is challenging, as much as they're moving around, come on, this is so fun. That th This really beats drawing from a photo. Even if I'm not able to get such precise results, I'm still okay with that. That's cool. Who's drawing along with me, by the way? And you don't have to draw my pigs. If you guys have a pet and you want to draw your pet, that's cool. That's great. I think that's awesome. Oh, see, the problem is he's like... He's not black, but this is not dark enough, this brown that I have. So maybe what I'll do is just like a quick, almost like a little glaze of black over. Like I'm not going to press that hard, but this definitely does not have the value range that I was looking for before. Let's try that. Maybe. Yeah. I need to make his eye a little rounder. It's like with all the fur, <laughs> you have to just like, find a couple places for the drawing to not be a blob of fur. You, you have to find a couple like landmarks. So for me, I guess that's what I'm trying to do right now is just looking for those landmarks. So of course, now he's like moving all around. Maybe he'll come back when, here, you want that? Yeah, yeah, that's yummy. <laughs> Wheat also does the thing. I don't know if you guys know this. Wheat, I'm gonna move you a little closer, honey, so I can see you. But he does this thing where he like, grabs the food and then he like pulls it towards him. He always does that with the food bowl. Like he'll pick up the food bowl and he'll just pull it towards his body. He's very funny that way. Yeah, so what I'm gonna do right now is just a couple strokes to show that movement. I feel like I overdid the black back here. Maybe this needs to come down. But I guess what I'm trying to do right now is just show the direction of the fur. For wheat, that's pretty important. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Because he's really big. <laughs> you know, it's funny, he was so small when we got him. He was like half a Fluffy size. And now I'm not kidding, he's like double what Fluffy weighs. I mean, Fluffy's always been small. Fluffy's sort of a runt in a way, but oh man, wheat, he is just really big. And we used to think, no, no, my husband had a theory for a little while that wheat was very aggressive, like passive aggressive, but he's not. I think he's just a little bit nervous. Oh, and I love doing their whiskers. You guys, it's so fun. <laughs> I love drawing animals. I'll tell you guys, when I was in Bryce Canyon yesterday, we were traveling around and I was just like on the hunt for animals the whole time. We'd drive by, I'd be like, stop, stop, I see cows. We had to take pictures of these cows. I mean, I've always loved drawing animals, but I think it's because of Art Prof, like we're trying to find subjects that are not just the same thing all the time. And so trying to find like a cool peacock to draw. And then I actually was gonna go to a botanical garden maybe this weekend and see what happens. Wheat, I think I need, I need a little more volume. Wheat, <laughs> wheat is good for volume. <laughs> so I'm trying to figure out like, do I wanna make more spastic marks? Do I want this to be more refined? It's a little bit tricky to tell exactly what I'm after right now. 
I'm going to make his bum a little bit more defined. And he's got this like little blob of flesh over here on the side. Like I can totally see it. <laughs> His ear is a little bit mushed back here. So I'm going to just try to show like a plane of that. I feel like I drew too small. What I'll do is on my next drawing, I'll go a lot bigger and then maybe I'll have more space to mess around. What I'm trying to do now is like layer the strokes a little bit more dramatically. You see, he's got this like, do you guys see his like punk hairdo? <laughs> I just I love his hair. <laughs> he's got this awesome hairstyle. Like I always imagine he would, I don't know. I think we would tour with Ziggy Stardust or something. <laughs> he just seems like he would, he would do really well on the, the punk rock circuit for rock stars. Oh, and there's lighting too. Like, do you guys see the light that's there? Yeah, I didn't capture that. So actually let's build up some of the light. It's hard because it's like you have to, figure out like what's light and what's pattern. Oh, oh, we, we, we come back. Come back, honey. You're here, here. You want, you want some dandelion? You want some dandelion? Yeah. Oh, that's tasty. Isn't that good? Yeah. But don't stretch out like that, honey. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. There you go. Oh, <laughs> Dusty Git says for using oil pastel, which one paper color is the best, the black one or other? It's not that one is better. I think the more important thing is that <clears throat> with color drawing media to use something that's not white. Now you can see here, I liked using this neutral gray because the yellow is sort of like a warm color. And so that's sort of nice against the gray. So you can try out a bunch of different things. I mean, sometimes if I'm drawing something that's like beige, I'll actually pick a blue colored background. Sometimes that's a nice contrast because then you have complementary colors. So there is not a color that's better than another. It just sort of depends on what it is you guys are looking for. <laughs> Sybil says, have you tried Terry Ludwig pastels in the live session? I was thinking about getting them. How are they? You know what? Let's try them right now because I have a bunch of different pastels. These are Terry Ludwig's. Let me show you guys the box. Where did I put the box? Hey, we, we don't, no, 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 no. Do you, do you need a carrot, honey? Yeah. Where did I put my Terry Ludwig's? Oh, they're over here. Hang on. Okay. So these are my Terry Ludwig's. They're pretty chunky. Let me get some of these. And I did do a stream I can't remember, must have been the one where I drew a dog, where I did demo all the individual pastel types. I mean, these are pretty good. I like them. They're a little bit softer. Here, no, 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 you're not having a banquet. Here you go, try that. Yeah, is that good? Yeah. <laughs> so actually, let me start another one. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I gotta start another one. This one's like, ugh. I made it too small. So I think I'm gonna go a little bit bigger. And actually we, can I turn you around so I can get a different view? Yeah, there you go, try that. Okay, try that. So this is like a blue tinted. Do I wanna do a side view? Yeah, let's do a side view. <laughs> All right, I gotta, I'm gonna go way bigger this time because last time I just, so small, I didn't really do very much. I mean, drawing guinea pigs, it's challenging because it's easy to think that there's not a lot to draw because their forms are not really that complicated. But then it's like when you get into the fur, you start to realize, oh, wow, there, there's like <laughs> kind of a lot going on here. Actually, this is cool. I got a side view of his punk rocker hairdo. This. So it's easy to underestimate what's going on because you think that they're simple, but they're not actually, there's actually quite a bit. So yeah, I guess that's how I'm gonna do it. I'm just gonna block in like the patterns. Oh, we don't tell me you're full. <laughs> don't, don't do what Jubby did. Do you guys ever have um, nicknames for your pets? We have so many nicknames. 
We call him Wheaties. We call him Wheats. And Jubby, I guess Jubby has the most. We call him Jubby. We call him Jub Jub. Jub Jub's his actual name. But we also call him Jobathan. Like if I'm upset with him, I'm like Jobathan, you know, like Jonathan. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. All right, there we go. And like I said, this brown is not dark enough, but let's just use it to block things in. No, we, oh, you guys, he's getting full. We come back. We, I was just getting started, honey. Here, maybe if I give you some dandelions. Will you be happier if I give you dandelions? Let's see. Or what about these leaves? They, they really like leaves. Leaves are like their favorite thing ever. Yeah, there you go. I knew that would make you more happy. <laughs> Although you gotta stand more this way. Here, this way, more that way. Yeah, that's better, good. Oh guys, I gotta work fast. <laughs> I thought Wheat was gonna cooperate, but he's being tough. He's making my life harder. I guess I gotta get to some of this stuff sooner. Usually I try not to do this detail stuff soon, but I guess he's just making me work, right? So I'm trying to put in essential details. Making me work, wheat. And I'm thinking about edges, like here it's very soft. But back here, I feel like it's a very crisp edge. You know what's funny about wheat? He used to have this like little tail down his bum. I don't know. He hasn't had it lately. I wonder if it's just like it, he had it in the beginning and then it shed. But he used to have like in the creature tutorial video that he's in. He did have that for quite some time. I will get to your comments, you guys. It's just, I need to get wheat <laughs> before he like fills up. I bet you anything when we get fluffy, fluffy will be way more compliant. I, I suppose, I think. Cause I just, I need to get the mass of your ear wheat. I don't want you to have an ear that has no mass. That wouldn't be good for you, right? At the very least, just some directional strokes to show where is the fur going. Because really, that's the most important thing <clears throat> I find with fur is you just need to show the direction. Like, which way is it going? Oh, are you getting bored again? Jeez, you guys have like no attention span today. <laughs> oh, he is not... Guys, I thought you were gonna be better models. <laughs> I do really wanna draw your face. Maybe I'll just do a quick one of your face. Just just chill out for a little bit, okay? Hang out for a little bit. I'm gonna answer some questions now. <laughs> Let's see, what are people saying in the chat? Yuki says, at which angle do you see him? I'm seeing more below like you guys are seeing him from above so i'm seeing him from the side which is actually better because i think from above you don't get to see so much oh wait did you already pee oh my god at least i brought a diaper <laughs> we always have these these are actually you know it's funny these diapers these are the cloth diapers that i used on my kids is that funny and now they're like the guinea pig stuff <laughs> Oh, capybaras. I would love to go to the zoo and draw capybaras. If you guys have never seen a capybara, it's like a giant guinea pig. Like that's basically what they are. They're so funny. Oh, wait, you're, you're gonna you're gonna eat for me? Okay, hang on. I, I gotta catch him while he's <laughs> doing this. I don't know, I had this like vision that I was gonna do all these cool things with them today. And I don't know, I don't know, we... I think the universe doesn't like me. <laughs> I know why the universe doesn't like me because I went on that trip to Bryce Canyon and stuff. And I was like, oh, it's, oh my God, I'm gonna take all these photos, it's gonna be great. Guys, I forgot my camera battery. Like how many, ugh, how many times can I do that? It's so idiotic of me. And I'm like, I'm here 
at Bryce Canyon with like the most beautiful landscape and my stupid camera battery is dying. Like, ah, oh, you just want to kill yourself. <laughs> <clears throat> Oh, okay, good. Maybe you are gonna, cause I love, I love his little tuft of hair. I love his hairdo. His hairdo is awesome. I wanna, I wanna give his hairdo some justice. Yeah, where are you going, huh? Where, where, where do you think you're going, huh? I don't wanna draw your bum. I know your bum is very cute, right? Okay, here we go, here we go. Here, let, let's put that down. Oh, 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 oh. There you go. Come on, can you just give me a few minutes? We, we. Oh man, and why do you guys like my webcam so much? Huh? What's so, you know what? I should have bought like 10 bags of dandelions. I think they like the dandelions way more than the other stuff. But I have not been around all week to do that. I just we you know you gotta turn a little this way. There we go. That's better. <laughs> so even though this drawing's not really going anywhere. I'm having fun. Who's having fun? <laughs> I know you guys, it's it's hard. A lot of people say in the Discord that, oh, well, I, I had a really rough session. I, I'm not happy with what I drew and everything. And I feel, no, 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 that's the drawing. Don't do that, okay? I don't want you eating my drawing. Um, but it's like any time you spend drawing, regardless of the results, in my opinion, it's all worth it absolutely worth it. I want to get his nostril in there. We come here. Come here. Just or maybe some more of the downward motion of this. Yeah, I just feel like I, I don't know. I feel like my drawing's so blobby right now. Like I I see all this structure on him and it's like not happening on my drawing. Right, we so maybe just a couple strokes in here will help. I don't know. Wheat, come on. I thought you were going to last longer than this. I knew Jubby was going to be crazy, but oh well. <laughs> Let's see. Jessica says, you still had your phone camera though. Yeah, I know it's not the same. Yeah, and you know something, guys, I really need a new phone. <laughs> like, I have an iPhone 10 and it's fine, but my husband got a new phone I think a year ago and the photos are amazing like the quality is just really outstanding so yeah I may need to um upgrade pretty soon yeah because like I when I have my DSLR it's just so much better Sybil says what art materials do you use I'm trying out velour paper right now it's so crazy well if you guys would like to know what I'm using for art supplies the art supply links, they are in the YouTube video description below. So you can find out all the different pastels, like I'm using Prismacolor. I'd mentioned earlier that I'm using the Terry Ludwig and I'm also using Rembrandt pastels, which are here as well. So you guys can check out all those different materials in the YouTube video description. Yeah, this is great. RB Dick says, it's all about having fun and learning. Exactly. You know what? This is very interesting. I, I'd love to hear your opinion, you guys, because somebody posted in a Facebook group the other day. It's a Facebook group for studio art college professors. And I go in there often because I like to help people out with some of our resources and things like that. And somebody said that they were teaching art history this semester and they were struggling because a lot of the readings for art history the language is like really, really dense. Like it's not very accessible writing. And the professor was saying, oh, well, I'm struggling with this because the students, they're having a hard time reading this type of language in our history stuff. And does anybody have any resources for any art history readings that are a little bit more accessible that are maybe not so densely written? And it was funny because there was a whole debate going on in this Facebook thread, some people saying, oh, people need to suck it up and learn how to read those dense readings. And I don't want to dumb down our content because people need to learn. Oh, we, we don't fall, don't fall. Um, 
people were like, oh, well, that's dumbing it down and the students need to level it up and they need to learn how to read these DUNS tests. And then other people were saying, yeah, I agree. I, I think it's bad that some of this writing is so inaccessible for so many people. And so I'm curious, do you guys think that art history and art theory texts should not be so densely written like that? Do you think that's making that content inaccessible? Or do you agree with the people who are saying students need to level up? They need to learn how to read dense texts. Because I think a lot of academics are seeing now with the pandemic, wow, a lot of art content is very inaccessible to most of the world. People are starting to really see that in a way that they did not before. Because I think before a lot of that was very much isolated to classrooms. And now with a lot of it becoming more accessible online, I think people are realizing, yeah, when you guys write dense texts like that, it makes it very hard for people to learn. I mean, I think you guys know which camp I'm in. <laughs> I, uh, I, I'm not into the big words. I, I find the big words so dry, boring, and ultimately very inaccessible. And I think that's a problem. So I, I don't agree with the people who say students need to level up. I'm like, I, I don't think this is about leveling up. I think this is about making it possible for people to learn in a way that's not super ultra boring, you know? Like, why does it have to be so boring? Like, why does teaching something in a dry way make it more elevated? I don't think so. I think it just makes it more boring. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's my opinion. So I, I'm curious to hear what you guys think. Oh, wait, now you're cooperating. Well, but now he's so chill. So I feel like I should go in because I was going to ignore some of these other passages. But now that he's, oh, wait, come on. Are you serious? We, I just got you to like, what? You're going to give me a front view now? You're going to give me a front view? <laughs> really? Where are you going? <laughs> We can you can you please come back? What if I what if I bribe you with another carrot? You want a carrot? Here, here, here. Come here, come here, come here. Come here. This way, this way. No, no, no. Here. <laughs> good, good job. Now just slide that little bum over there. Okay, that's a lot better. W315 says, academic language is dense, but that doesn't make it smarter. If writers were really smart, they would figure out a way to make it more accessible. Char Fern says, it should be accessible for all, plus I'm dyslexic, so it takes me a bit longer to read the heavy worded text. And Seven Angelic says, the purpose of language is to communicate. If it's not being understood, then it has failed. And Sybil says, I didn't like art history in school. Right now I am learning this issue because I want it and it is interesting to me. It should be taught more entertainingly. I agree. <laughs> Cause it's like, if you can make it fun, why wouldn't you make it fun? Like, like that's what I think. I think some teachers think that they're stooping to a lower level by making it fun. A lot of academics, I, I'll hear them say things like, I am not an entertainer. I, I am not here to, entertain you as if that's a negative thing. I, I disagree with that. Lizzie says, if the language is too densely packed and most students are beginning to struggle to understand the content, then there's definitely no problem with quote, dumbing it down. Soyton Lee says, so many academics writing is so dry. With TV and the internet, we have found that you can present the material in an entertaining way. I can learn more history in one hour than in a whole semester. Yuki is asking, how do you keep up with one pose? My bunny moves a lot. I have the tendency to switch from sketch every 10 seconds, and I end up with those weird alien <laughs> drawings that I can't use for anything. <laughs> you know something, Yuki? Those weird alien drawings, honestly, th they have a place. Like, th this is not really about the drawings, okay? Like, yeah, it's nice if I have a cute drawing of we, but honestly, this is about the experience of drawing. And I think not enough people think about that with drawing. I think so much of it is about like, result, result, result. How good does this look? And sure, it's nice for that. 
But if I really am like worried about results, oftentimes I'm just going to do something else. So you have to say to yourself, okay, really, what, what is the purpose? What am I after in this drawing? Am I after an experience or am I after a product? And it's up to you guys what you want that to be. When I'm doing stuff like this, I'm absolutely after the experience. I'm not after the product. So it's almost like you don't want to chase an unrealistic goal. And this is fun. This is so fun for me. I mean, I don't like this drawing, but I like making marks. And I like the way that the pastel feels on my paper. And wow, we I cannot believe you are like somewhat holding still for me. I mean, I do feel like I'm just drawing a big puffball right now. <laughs> There's sort of like no sense of form right now, but who cares? Actually, you know what this view is, you guys? Our little joke about Wheat is we always say that he's wearing pants. Does everybody see he's white here and dark on this side? So we always say that Wheat has pants. So we call him Mr. Pants. <laughs> That's what my, my husband always calls him Mr. Pants because he's wearing his pants. So yeah, Yuki, I, I don't sweat it. Like I don't worry about like, oh no, he moved. Oh, this change. It's like, you, you just sort of pick what you can get. Like right now I'm, I'm just throwing in anything that I can possibly get into the experience. And then beyond that, I don't sweat it very much. But what would be nice here is to get a sense of the lighting because you guys see here, you can really see that. I don't know. He's hard though, because he's really like a patchwork quilt. And actually that's a little bit too bright. Yeah, I didn't realize how dark your butt was. We, I thought it was more brown, but it's, it's actually very dark. So yeah, like I'm just doing this exercise I mean, obviously I'm here with you guys streaming and stuff like that, but I'm just loving the moment of drawing. And I think too much of what I see online is people just getting so hung up on product, product. And I'm like, listen, just, it's, it's the experience, okay? It's not, did you win the Olympics? It's like, what, did you have a good time? <laughs> like, was it fun? Was it, was it worth it for that reason? So what I'm looking for now is just some smaller sections and I'm looking at transitions because I'm not good at pattern. Like that pattern stream that Lauren and Jordan did a little ways back, I was like, dude, I need to do that stream. Like I am not good at pattern at all. And so th this for me is a good exercise because I'm not somebody who just is naturally good in that area. See, I'm going to become a little more volumetric. I feel like maybe he's got a little more brown on this side. Because I think the issue with something like this is like it's so easy for this to just turn into like a pattern. But I don't want that to happen. Wait, I can't believe you're just hanging out for me. This is real. Oh, no, no, no. Spoke too soon. <laughs> well, I don't know. That might be. Might still be able to get something out of here. Right? I do. I do love your hair. I do love your hairdo. <laughs> it's funny, he does have these little, like little white spots in here too. Let's see what I can get doing that. Oh, now he kind of like moved a lot. And Yuki is asking, what is pastel paper actually? Is it kind of like sandpaper? It's not. The main difference is that pastel paper it has a little bit of texture so that it's able to capture the dust. So it's not totally smooth. Like for example, Bristol board would be terrible to use if you guys were doing pastel paper because the, the pastel would just like brush right off and that would be not so fun. But uh, I do really enjoy the texture of it. Like I would not want to draw on something that was more dramatic. Okay, wait, turn, turn this way, honey. Can you just give me a little more? Come on, please. Just, I need to give you more form. You don't have enough form yet. Don't you want form? No, he seems really happy right now. You guys, do you think he's like really satiated? Like maybe he's just so happy that <laughs> he's finished his meal. I don't know. 
So what I'm playing with right now is pressure, like physical pressure. How hard am I pressing down with this? <laughs> Copper is asking, how old is your guinea pig? Well, all three of our guinea pigs are boys. Wheat, when did we get you? I feel like we got him in 2018, I think. So he's like three years. Fluffy's a lot older than that. Nivedita says, what's your favorite thing about wheat? I think he's just such a fatty. I just, I just love his stomach. <laughs> he's got a great stomach, you guys. Manasvi says these live streams with 3D objects are so fun. Can we please see more? Sure. You guys tell, tell us what you want, honestly, because I think what we really, really want to do at Art Prof is we want to give you guys the experience you want. So if you find that, oh, well, I really want to try this stream or we really want this topic, um, tell us in the Discord. You guys can comment on one of our YouTube videos, whatever. Tell us because... Let me tell you, I don't know what you guys need. Like I would like to think I do, but I obviously do not. And so I rely very much on you guys to tell me what it is that you're you're interested in, what you guys want to learn. You want to go somewhere else? I'm going to try another fast one. <laughs> Let's see if we can squeeze in like maybe one more quick one over here. Let's see. <laughs> I'm just scrolling up into the content. Oh, Blood Red Setting Sun says, oh my God, I found my favorite childhood plushie in the attic this morning. It's a guinea pig. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. You know, there aren't that many guinea pig plushies out there, actually. Like, you'd think there'd be more, but actually we have not found that many. We, oh, did you soak this diaper? Oh my gosh. By the way, I'm gonna shout out to RB Dick. Thank you so much for the super sticker. We greatly appreciate your support. You guys, your contributions, they go a long way. It's not a small thing when you guys contribute. It, it directly impacts what we can give you guys in terms of content. Because you know something, I think a lot of the stuff behind the scenes, it's like a lot of it's just very invisible. Like there's just so many things involved that you just would never think, what, what are you doing? Is this like a stretching thing? Okay, you're gonna come back, please, please. <laughs> yeah, but to answer somebody else's question earlier about how to deal with them moving and stuff, sometimes you just have to wait. Like you'll be working on it and then all of a sudden they'll move and you're like, oh, that's so annoying. Get back to that pose. But honestly, like a lot of the times, if you just like wait a couple seconds, they'll go back. Sometimes they won't. <laughs> Sometimes there's not a lot you can do about that. But that's okay. And again, think about it this way. The experience of drawing, you guys. Not the product. Not what you end up with. The experience of drawing. Oh, I do like your butt. <laughs> you know what else I do? Like somebody asked me earlier some of my favorite things about the pigs. My other favorite thing is when they go flat. Does anybody else have a guinea pig? Like when they get really relaxed, they just like make their bodies flat and they just like smush into a blanket. It's just like the cutest thing. <laughs> so we, we really like it when they do that. Let me see if I can get more of your face in here, we, because I feel like I was missing that. See, I don't, I don't like using black this early, but I feel like I need it for his brown color. His brown color is so much darker than I thought. I guess I've never really drawn him in this much color before. I guess past beat <laughs> drawings I have done, usually I've done them in colored pencil or something where I haven't had to like really get accurate about the tone. And so I guess today I'm learning something new about you, Wheat. Hmm? I like how you're like sitting on the carrots. Nice. <laughs> 
So this is fun too. Do you guys see how I'm drawing like underneath? Like that's another way to tackle some of this stuff is to draw what's around the pig and not just what's on top. Oh, this is really hard. I'll tell you the patterns are difficult. I don't like that brown. That brown was not so great. I do really, I want to get your hair. Like, see this like awesome, like swirl that he has. Oh, he's so funny. Yeah, like here, it's like very bright. Sticks out. It is very satisfying <laughs> to do that. <laughs> That's awesome. We good job, honey. I guess I'm trying to figure out like where is light, where's pattern, and where's shadow? Because a lot of it just sort of like blends into one thing. I guess right now I'm trying to do lighting. So that way, like that's the lighting. But I don't want to do too much. Oh, this is harder than it. I, I don't know. I sort of, I'm not that I thought this would be easy necessarily, but this is pretty challenging. There's a lot. I mean, you think, oh, it's just a fur ball. It's not a big deal. I'm like, no. oh, we, are you going to poo? Ugh. Well, I knew that was going to happen. You guys know how much they poop. They poop so much. WC asks, do you bathe them? You don't have to, but they are hilarious. <laughs> like if you put them in a sink and you let them take a bath, they're really, really funny. They, they get all like funky and their fur goes everywhere. It's pretty cute. I guess we haven't done it for a little while because it's been winter, but I don't know, maybe now that it's getting warmer now, maybe we'll do that again. It is hilarious. And I am laughing really hard. I don't know if you guys know this, but um, my daughter has a guinea, uh, YouTube channel just for the guinea pigs. And I'm so mad because you know what? There's a video of Jubby going up the stairs has 29,000 views. I'm like, YouTube gods, you guys suck. Like, <laughs> like I'll spend all this time on this like anatomy and like linear perspective video. And then it's like 30 seconds of Jub Jub running up the stairs. There we go, 29,000 views. I'm like, awesome. <laughs> I think lately just the YouTube universe I don't know. They, they don't like me right now. Like I, It's so weird. It's like you think, oh, we're, we're close to 100,000 subscribers, which is very exciting. I'm like so blown away by that. But it's like our views have actually been going down. Like it's strange. Like our views were much higher a couple of months ago. It's like YouTube is just so fickle that way. Like you just never know where the views are going to go. It's very unpredictable. <laughs> yes, Lizzie, pastel, so great for drawing fur. I know, it's like, if I did this with anything else, it would be a lot faster, a lot slower. Like I'd have to go in and draw things more specifically. I like this comment from Crow Nap. In my English class, we learn to pretend that the reader knows absolutely nothing about the subject so that our writing is more accessible. I love that. I mean, we do that here, especially during tutorials. I try to make sure with our staff, I say, listen, you guys, pretend you are speaking to someone who's 10 years old. Like, I'm not kidding. And I know sometimes that seems ridiculous, but I'm like, listen, we have a really broad audience. We have people, English is not their first language, and we have people who are very young that watch us. Like I had a mother, she wrote me an email and she said that her daughter's eight, she watches all of our videos and that art has been so important to her during the pandemic. And so my feeling is like, I, I don't think it's a good idea to write to such a narrow audience. It, it's like, you don't know who might be benefiting from that information. And I think that is different now because of the internet. I mean, before the internet, the only people that got access to that stuff were people who were actually like in the classroom and stuff. But now it's like, if you put stuff online, you have no idea who might benefit from that. It could be somebody in a foreign country. 
It could be somebody who really wants to learn but can't go to art school. Like I was doing a voice session in the Patreon channel in the Discord yesterday. And so many people were saying to me, they were like, yeah, you know, I never had an art professor. I don't know what it's like to get this type of mentorship. And I think that if you're going to serve a broader audience like that, then that, that has to be something that you think about. We, I'm sorry, I, I didn't give you a nose. And I got to give you some whiskers. It's hard. It's like this whole part of his, it's sorry, this whole part of his face is in shadow. Oh, I don't know. I feel like with pastel, everything gets so mushy so fast. Like I'm, I'm trying to pull out some of these sections, but then sometimes I feel like I just end up making a big mess. Yeah, like did I lose part of his body up there? We, I'm sorry. I think you need a little more body up here. I do love this, that, that little spot of his bub. <laughs> yeah, that's a little bit better. Yeah, he's like really chill right now. Emil says in Austria, guinea pigs are called, oh, I can't even pronounce this, sea piggies. As a child, I thought they lived in the ocean. Oh my gosh, that is so adorable. I love this. So cool, you guys. Georgina wants to see his cute face. Well, let me see if I can oblige you guys. Let's see, how's that? There you are. See? <laughs> I don't know if he's going to turn around. He doesn't really like it, although, yeah, I don't think he's going to like it. He doesn't like going upside down. But anyway, there's, there's his face. You guys can see him a little bit better. <laughs> Maggie says, it's cool to learn art history through Crit Clash. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the reasons why we teach art history in that way is because you, you got to keep it fun. <laughs> it doesn't have to be so dry. Oh, you're going to eat some more? Hmm. Yeah, you're going to eat some more? Oh my God, you drenched this diaper. My goodness. Okay, I'm going to do another one. I want to do one of his face. So we can you just like turn this way? Maybe if I, I guess I have to bend down a little bit to see you better. I'll try. We'll see. <laughs> I don't know. Wait, wait, wait. Where are you going? Where are you going? Come on, over here, over here. <laughs> Yuki says, I love how supportive you are of your daughters. What is that channel called? Well, if you guys want to look up their YouTube channel, it's called the, I'll type it into the chat right now, the guinea pig. And what I'll do is I'll post a link to it in the Discord and you guys can check it out. <laughs> you can see the 29,000 views that Jump Jump has. <laughs> Sarah says, I love this channel. Seeing people drawing makes me so happy. It makes me so happy. I just, you know, even if my, drawings don't turn out great, I still have a good time. And in my opinion, that's the most important thing. Okay, here we go. Let's try this. I'm gonna get your face now, right? Let's get your face. Oh, I guess I gotta bend down a little bit. It's hard, their faces, like you really do have to bend down to see what they're doing. Maybe if I just like, Mark. Oh no, you're gonna turn that way. I'm trying to do a front view. We, I'm trying to teach point of view. You gotta help me out. I, I mean, one thing you can really see his fur going all over the place. Actually, you know, what I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try a little bit more just like straight drawing because I've been doing a lot of this like blocking in big colors, but maybe I should do something that's a little bit more line-based. Let, let's just try. I don't know. I think it's sort of fun when you're doing these quick drawings just to try out a whole bunch of different approaches and just see like, okay, hey, which one really works? He's actually cooperating a lot. Wait, you're such a good model. 
Yeah. <laughs> I think Fluffy is going to make an appearance pretty soon. But I do really want to get like a face because the guinea pig face is just so great. And I do want to loosen up. You are just sort of a big puffball. Oh, guys, I was so sad yesterday. We were driving through this tiny, tiny little town. And it was this little gas station. It's like one of those gas stations. It looks like the gas pumps don't work. Like one of those gas stations. And we went in just to get some snacks. And they had a huge tower of chicks. Like apparently at this gas station, you can go and buy chicks. And then next to the cash register, they had a whole cage of ducks. I was like, oh my gosh, how many places can you go into a gas station and just like buy a duck? <laughs> like, that is so cool. I just sort of love that. Oh, and Wheat, I do really like your feet. So another thing about Wheat that we really like, he does this like sphinx pose where he just like puts his arms out. Um, he's not doing it right now, but I can see his little feet sticking out underneath his fur. But sometimes he like stretches them out like a sphinx. So I'm just going to draw those in. He's a lot fatter. I didn't get... We, I need to show the width. You have a lot more width than that. <laughs> That's better. And actually, his fat goes out a lot further. Yeah, why didn't I make you wide enough? You're definitely wider than that. For sure. <laughs> that is really fun. <laughs> The angle's strange. I mean, what I really wanted to do with those ducks and the chicks at the store, I really wanted to go in there with my reference camera and, you know, take all these photos. I was like, okay, they're going to think I'm weird if I go in and I do that. But they were so cute. It really made me want chicks. See, you guys can't see, but the right side of Wheat's mouth, it's actually like a little bit brown. Oh, that's kind of fun. He's, you guys, he's so chill right now. Do you see? <laughs> he's so chill. You're just like really helping me right now. You guys, he's like really, really standing still. This never happens. So yeah, we gotta, we gotta capitalize on this as much as we possibly can. Whoops, that gets a little crumbly. Yuki says, do uncooperative human models exist? And if yes, what do they do? I'm sure there are. I mean, it's hard to get good live models. I mean, I've never really had a lot of success with like asking somebody to pose. Like it's always just like, oh, they're reading. And so I happen to be drawing them. That's my feeling. But also, you know something, and those of you guys who have been to like a life drawing class, tell me if this is the case for you. Oftentimes, if I'm in a life drawing class and I'm drawing a model, it, it is uncomfortable for me because it's like I have to think about like, OK, they're sitting still. It's uncomfortable for them. Like it's, it's not always I don't know. I mean, it is ideal in terms of them not moving and making it easy for you to draw. But it's like from a point of view of making it feel more natural it's, it's not natural to have somebody sit and pose for you like I, I actually feel better drawing a family member just like reading a book or something that that to me feels more natural because it's like they're in their natural state whereas like a model who's posing for you in class is not natural you know it's like not what the human body normally wants to do wow wait I'm like so impressed He's like, what? he's so chill right now. Like, what are you? I know it must be. I think um, San K says he's so chill because he's in a food coma. <laughs> yeah. Rachel says, good job, we Very good model boy. <laughs> he is. He's like doing. Now I feel like 
oh my gosh. Now I feel like I don't have an excuse. I'm like, oh man, I have to do a good drawing now because he's cooperating so much. See, like you guys, here's the thing. Yes, this is not as convenient as far as like, you know, getting him to cooperate and send someone, but isn't this fun? Isn't this so cool to like draw from the real thing? It's just, it doesn't get better than this. So it's like, to me, the inconvenience of him not moving is it, like fine. It's it's fine for me to put up with that because this is just such a funny experience. You know, it's like, yeah, if I draw from a photo, I don't have to worry about that stuff, but I don't have these funny moments. I like spending time with him too. I missed you. I hadn't seen him for a little while because we were out of town, but now we're back. Oh, we, oh, you were being such a good boy, aren't you? Let's get the little pink spots on your feet. You need to clip your nails. I feel like your nails have not been clipped for a little while. It seems like we should do that. Oh, and he definitely needs more. It's tricky. I like, I feel like I made this a little bit too harsh up here. Maybe I just need to have a little more texture because there's like light here and shadow up here. I'm conscious of getting too dark too fast. Oh, and I totally forgot his shoot. I didn't add this pattern up here at all. Maybe a little touch up there. Yeah, he really is like, you getting flat. <laughs> I love it when they get flat. It's just the cutest thing. Yeah, like at, at the very least up here, like show how that fur goes that way. So those of you guys who are drawing with pastels, like really think about the direction of your stroke, because I do think that every stroke you put down, it's like a statement about where things are going. So the more you can show that, oh, you want more carrot? I guess your food coma was not over. My art journey says depressing question here. How do you deal with self doubt? I don't think that's depressing at all. My art journey. I think that that is such a common part of being an artist. I don't think there's anybody who is an artist who has not encountered self doubt to some degree. And you know what? I don't think it's depressing to talk about that at all. I think it's more depressing when people act like you shouldn't have any self doubt. And yet that is what you feel as an artist. Um, because here's my anti-social media rant again. It's like social media teaches artists that we have to be perfect. And I'm like, that is so not what being an artist is about. There is no perfection. There is no being great and making amazing work all the time. That, that's just not part of, it's not realistic. That's not what it's like. It's it's like that if you curate things to death and you, oh, we, do you want some, maybe if I give him some dandelion, he'll stay. I just, I really like the drawing I'm doing right now. <laughs> That's all I want him to stay. Here, take that. I think you're sick of the carrots. There you go. But yeah, I think with self-doubt, you know what helps me is I try to turn my brain off. I don't know if that makes any sense, but when I'm drawing, if I have too much time to like think about, oh, how's my drawing doing? Does it look good? Does it look bad? I go to bad places. <laughs> it's not pretty guys. So when I work, I put on a podcast. I listen to a movie I've watched 10,000 times. I, I do something to get my mind off of it so I can just be immersed in the process of drawing and nothing else. And... I guess another thing I do is I get support from other artists, like hang out with us in the Discord, um, get encouragement from people who are wanting to help you because a lot of the internet is not that. A lot of the internet is people wanting to look great all the time. So you, you have to be around people who are gonna support you. I think a, a, big, a big part of it is just having that supportive community to keep you going. But my art journey, you are not alone. That That is so common. Tell me in the chat, who here has doubt about their abilities as an artist, 
about the work they're doing. Who here experiences that? I experience it all the time. And a lot of the stuff that I tell you guys about, I experience it myself. It doesn't stop. <laughs> you know, it's like people think, oh, once you become a professional, you don't have these problems anymore. And I'm like, no, you do. You still have them. It's just you you figure out coping mechanisms, like how, how to deal with it. And a big part of it for me is having a, a strong supportive community, people to say, hey, shut up. <laughs> just focus on the work. You need to be around like-minded people. It's a huge, huge help. See how loud he is? You guys, he... He's so loud when he eats. Sybil says, yes, on Instagram, there are all the polished pictures. Don't compare your stuff with the pictures from other artists. All these people, you guys, look, Rachel, Santa Kay, Daniel T, so many people. I think just being able to say that out loud to other people and to know you're not the only one. I think that in itself is very reassuring to go, wow, I'm not crazy. <laughs> this, this really is normal. This is fine. This is the way it's supposed to be. I mean, I do feel that so much of the time I'm questioning myself. It's because I'm like, oh, I'm the only one that thinks this way or, oh, nobody else does. And everybody else looks so much perfect, but it's not really like that. It just seems like that. It, the appearance of it comes across that way. But I can assure you that is not the case. I just really want his punk hair to, to come out. Maybe a little more highlight on the side of his nose. I feel like I'm losing his nose a little bit. <laughs> Ananin says, very often I ask someone who seemed to never have self-doubt and they confess they just act like they don't. Everyone has self-doubt. Exactly. And you know what, you guys, the reason I know this stuff, honestly, is because when I taught at RISD, students told me this stuff all the time. And honestly, so much of the time, the people that really were having the hardest time were the people that looked like they were doing great on the outside. Like I'd have these students who just looked from the outside like they were doing great. And then they would tell me later, oh, my God, I'm like totally falling apart. So I think... A lot of it is just like a, how good are you at hiding it? <laughs> I, mean, that's, I don't know if I ever told you guys this. This is my philosophy on life. This is what I have learned from teaching art for so long. Okay, this is my philosophy. My philosophy is that everybody in the world is effed up. It's just some of us are better at hiding it than others. And that's okay. I mean, not everybody can do that. Everybody's in a different situation, but we all have something in our lives something and it doesn't have anything to do with money or your situation it's just like that you know like a lot of people were so angry at Meghan Markle and Harry for doing that Oprah interview and everything and people were like oh she's a princess she she's so much money I don't feel bad for her at all I'm like it doesn't have to do with money I, it's like <laughs> I mean like yes money to a certain degree does make a difference. I mean, you, you, everybody has to have what they need and hopefully you do, but um, I don't know. I thought that was so unfair of people to say, oh, well, because she's not destitute, she has no right to complain. I'm like, I mean, from what I saw, it sounded like there was plenty to be complaining about. So yeah, that's just my feeling. I think everybody has that. Just some people are very good at hiding it. Right now, I feel like this is very mushy and I, I want to just like press down and ugh, crap. Do you guys see that? <laughs> okay, we're going to dump that. <laughs> that just really crumbled. But I, I just need a little more. Ugh, oh, wait, I'm sorry. Shoot, I might have to go get another. You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to, you know what I'm going to do? Wheat. Hang on a sec, honey. I got to pick you up for a sec. Ugh, ugh. <laughs> we're going to just take you. And we're gonna flop this over because I got a little bit of pastel on there. So let's try that. Okay, there you go. I know you were enjoying that. You were having a really good time. Turn this way though. Turn that way. Good. 
yeah, because I was like losing his ear. I'm just trying to like get a little bit less chaotic, a little bit more structure. But it's like I don't want too much. Ah. <laughs> well, maybe Wheat's gonna change his mind and I won't be able to do anything. <laughs> what? Now I can see your nostrils better. Thank you. It's a little bit better. We're getting there. Freya says, I actually stopped drawing for two years because of self-doubt. I had a friend who was really good at art, so I just felt I wasn't good enough. But then I started drawing for myself and it got better. You guys, so much of it, I think comes down to when we compare ourselves to other people, it it's rough. Let me tell, I get it, okay? Like, okay, confession. All right, you guys, <laughs> it's confession time. I am a petty person who is jealous. <laughs> so the other day, who, who else does this? Okay, this is, oh, I can't believe I'm telling you guys this. Sometimes I get on this like jealousy kick and I do stuff that I should not do. For example, sometimes when I feel kind of crappy about myself, what I'll do, and I know this is not smart or healthy, I will go and I will Google people whose careers I'm jealous of. People I went to school with, somebody whose work I think is amazing, but I know I can't do. And I don't know why I do that to myself because it's like, it only makes me feel worse. I know it's going to make me feel worse to like look up this person who like won this award and like everybody's fawning over them and everything. And it just, it makes me feel like garbage. And yet I do it. I will totally like look these people up and it's a bad idea. Like I should not do that. You guys, it's toxic, but I can't help it. It's really hard. Um, cause like, it's like, you look at these people's things and you're like, oh my God, I can't compare to this. Like I cannot, <sighs> you know, it's, it's like people that win MacArthur grants, you know, if you guys don't know what the MacArthur grant is, it's a grant that they give out to like, anybody can win it. I mean, you can be like a scientist, you can be a social worker, you can be a musician, you can, you know, there's all different reasons why, um, somebody could win a MacArthur but so every year when they give out the MacArthur's, there's always a couple of visual artists on that list. And so what do I do? I look at the people on the list. And of course, there are always a couple of people on that list that I know. And it's like, oh, like it just kills me that I do that. Like, why do I do that? Like, I know it's terrible. Come come back here, honey, honey. Here, here, here. You got to we stand here, please. There we go. Okay, that's a lot better. I'm kind of happy with this drawing of wheat, you guys. I feel like I'm starting to get it more organized. I don't know, I might be starting to pick though. We'll see. Moops the dog doodles says, that's pretty much the source of my self doubt. I do that a lot. Sarah says, I used to think that I drew just for myself and enjoyed it at the moment, but lately I have realized I was just afraid to show the things that I draw because I think it is not good enough. And John Murph says, I get envious with people's talents too. Sorry, I'm human. We all are. We all are susceptible to all of those tendencies. Sybil says, art prof is such an accomplishment, you can be proud. See, th this is where the crazy part of my brain, it doesn't work because I get such lovely comments from people. I think that we finally are getting some traction because for years I was building art prof and we were just screaming to the void forever and ever and ever. And just nothing worked. And we're, we're starting to get that traction now. And yet part of me, I, I still have a voice in my head, you guys, that says, Clara, if you were a good enough artist, you would be a full-time tenured professor. I know it's stupid. It's so, so stupid. Most of the time I can ignore it, but that little itch is there. And it's, we all go through this, you guys. I don't think it matters um, how rich or successful you are. Everybody has degrees of doubt. 
Three Da Manya says, I have a real hard time shutting my mind off when I'm drawing. I get frustrated so fast. I'm not being perfect and making mistakes. Do you have tips on how to draw more freely? You know, I would recommend is um, we have a stream actually where I did two minute gesture drawings. So just look up Art Prof two minute gestures. You'll find it where I draw from Ubridge, who is a filmmaker. He made these incredible film stills. And so if you set a timer and you just draw for like two minutes at a time, you're moving so fast that there's no time to judge yourself. So I think sometimes setting a timer is very helpful because then you're not like right now I could stop and pick at this if I wanted to, but with a timer, you can't really do that. We can you turn over here, honey? Something like that. Yeah, that's better. Good. Thank you. So yeah, drawing with a timer and, and then you're like, oh, well, I only had two minutes. Of course, it's not going to look good. And so it's like people don't have the same expectations. Like when you know you only have two minutes to draw, you know that your options just go down automatically. And then I think a lot of it is just our own expectations. Like we ourselves cannot push ourselves in that way, which is sort of a good thing. I think I'm picking up this drawing. So guys, I think it might be time for fluffy to make an appearance. <laughs> Drew Bigelow says, I wouldn't have started printmaking without your lino cut tutorial. You are appreciated. Well, thank you so much. Like you guys, I love it. Like when somebody says to me, I haven't drawn in five years, but because I watched your tutorial, I picked it up. Like that's amazing to me. If I can be the, the stepping stone to you guys picking up a piece of paper, that's that's awesome. I love that. All right, we. I just want to do a little. Man, I, I'm so close on this. I just don't want to kill it. So I think what I'm going to do is just block in a couple of bigger shapes because it's a it's still a little bit mushy for me as a drawing. But I don't know. Maybe that's okay. Or maybe I just need a couple more like harsh moments. Might be too mushy. I don't know. It's all doubt. You guys like the whole art making process. It's all about doubt. <laughs> like, haven't you guys noticed this? It's a recurring theme in a lot of my live streams. It's just, it's all doubt. Am I finished? Am I not? Should I add more? <laughs> Constant questioning, not easy. And that's why it's like, if you can make art with other people around, hang out with us in the live stream, show us stuff in the Discord, it does make it easier. Like those of you guys who have posted your stuff in the Art Alongs channel, done the Art Dares, has that helped you to feel that you're, you're making work with other people? You're not totally by yourself. I think it's just, it's a very lonely place. <laughs> if you're an artist and you're just doing stuff totally by yourself, it can feel very isolating and difficult. Okay, we, you might be done. Are you done? Yeah, I think you are. Okay, guys, get, give me a little break. I'm going to go and get Fluffy. Fluffy's very, very chill. Okay, we, we can you say goodbye? To everybody here here he is <laughs> wheat good job you were a very good model <laughs> all right guys give me a minute i'll be right back All right, we need a little bit of a diaper change since wheat peed all over. Oh, he also left a nice little poop. Thank you very much, wheat. That was much appreciated. All right, Fluffy. There we go. You gonna cooperate? What do you want? Yes. <laughs> all right, Fluffy. Closer so I can see you better. Good. <laughs> oh. 
Let's see. Then he says, two minutes is still not enough for me to turn my brain off. I'd have to do 30 seconds and do it. <laughs> you know, there are a lot of people who do 30 seconds just for drawings. I mean, it's more just moving your hand. <laughs> I mean, you're not like really trying to do anything, but that's important. And three da manya says, I've been trying gesture drawing with a timer, helps a lot. So I find myself pausing the timer to correct mistakes more often than not. Yeah, <laughs> I know that desire is definitely there, I think, for a lot of us. <laughs> and Mala Vika says, as a beginner who could not draw before when I was able to draw for the first time I was happy that's wonderful like that's all that matters you guys think about it that way I know we only got one poop I'm kind of amazed like <laughs> the, the guinea pigs I think my daughter told me the other day she was like yeah you know guinea pigs poop like their weight in a single day I was like wow that's very it's very impressive <laughs> See, Fluffy, you're a lot easier to draw. Just having one color, it's like, oh man, what a game changer that is. I, I really did find the patterns on Jub Jub and Wheat. They were hard. Like this is so much easier just having one color. It's, it's awesome. I'm kind of loving this. <laughs> You know, I, I like planing in these big blobs. I guess I, I just love being loose. Although my whole questioning process always comes down to, are you loose enough? Maybe you need to loosen up more. Maybe you're being too tight. Come on, Clara, stop it. Be looser. <laughs> and there's definitely a monologue in there. I'm going to really try to get the light down. I feel like I didn't do a great job with that on wheat. So I'm going to show like, see how I'm building up that area there. Make that light a little bit more visible. Oh, and I love your little feet down there. That is just awesome. <laughs> oh, hello. How do you say your name? Juriek Anne? Hello, everyone from France. First live ever. Awesome. Tell me in the chat, who's here live for the first time? We've had a lot of first timers over the past couple of streams. And I, I just love it when you guys are here live for the first time. It's such a different experience. <laughs> Louis says shape of a papaya. <laughs> oh, that's great. Carolyn's Art Adventures says, I find for fast drawing, like 30 seconds, doing several on one page and letting them overlap helps me not worry about where they're not accurate. Oh, that's a great idea. And Carolyn, I also like that you end up with like a sketchbook spread. So you can see really the development across that page. And you're right. Like if you do one drawing per page, you're much more likely to be precious about it. But Doing it that way, it's a pretty big difference. So actually, this is the Terry Ludwig pastel that people were asking me about before. Let me do a little bit more work. Oh, this is like such a different color. You guys probably can't tell, but the Terry Ludwig, it's a little bit more yellow. And this new pastel white, it was a little bit more bluish. This, this definitely has like a warm tint to it that I wasn't prepared for. It's amazing, like the, the subtleties you can see. Okay, and I think I'm gonna jump right in. I, I feel like I did not do a great job on the eyes in the last two. So I think this time I am gonna try to make that a little bit more significant. I mean, guys, I'm really sad about Fluffy because he's sick and he's not gonna be around that much longer. He's got a really big lump on his stomach and it just, oh, it feels so terrible. Like every time I pick him up, I can feel that lump and it's very large now. It was not that large little ways ago, but it's, it's very large now and we, we just don't know. And you know something what's interesting is I was never really a pet person. Like I had a pet when I was growing up but I had to fight my mom tooth and nail to get that pet. And so we got the guinea pigs for my kids. I think, 
when my younger daughter was in kindergarten, we got our first guinea pig. And when Bubba, our first guinea pig, when he passed away, guys, it, it was like a person died. Like I had no idea what kind of impact that was going to have on my kids. Like I have never seen them that upset. And it's like now all the pet stuff that I, I used to like not understand why people would get so emotional. I'll, I'll admit, I just didn't get it. And then after that experience, I was like, oh my God. And so we're just sort of like, sort of like preparing myself because it's, we've had him for so long and yeah, I don't know how much longer he's, he's just a sweet little guy. Right. You know, what's really cute about Fluffy is he's the only one of our pigs. If I go to pick him up, he'll let me pick him up. Like I can just pick him up. Wheat and Jub Jub, they just race. <laughs> They're like really jumpy. They run away. They won't let me do that. And also when I give him a carrot and he takes it, he, he just like very gently just like picks it up. Like Jubby will just like grab it out of my hand. <laughs> you know, he's like very aggressive. Like Fluffy's just like really, really gentle. And oh, you guys, I just don't know what I'm going to do when the time comes. I, I don't think it's that far away. I think it's probably fairly soon. So we'll see. But that's why we're going to spend time with you right now. Right, Fluffs? <sighs> Yeah, like I remember when Bubba died, like my kids were they were just crying for days, like days straight. It was it was really rough. Hutchins says, I cried a whole week when my dog died when I was a teen. I swear I will not have a dog anymore the rest of my life. It almost destroyed me back then. Very devastating. Yeah, I know. 3D Mana says, How old is he? I I think we got him in 2016 so he's like five years old which for a guinea pig is pretty old I mean a lot of them aren't really not around that long but he's he's been around a really long time uh okay let's get in I feel like I I don't know I made the shape of his body a little bit too mushy I don't know I might try something different with this one stylistically. We'll see. No, it's funny. It's like he's white in terms of color, but actually there's a lot of texture on him, right? Right, Fluffy? Are you a good texture study? <laughs> I feel like I'm like talking pet talk. It's sort of like baby talk, you know? Like who here talks baby talk to their pets? <laughs> I totally do. <laughs> I don't know. You just turn into like a babbling idiot when you're around <laughs> your pets. <laughs> Hmm. I'm starting to see there's like some peach color in there. So actually, maybe I'll start building in. Well, I don't know if it's peach though. Is it like a blue? I'm going to try a little bit of blue in here. It might be a little bit too much, but. I don't know. It's it's just getting a little bit boring for me. <laughs> so I, I need to just like punch it up a little bit more. Maybe if I do like the blue combined with the peach, maybe that's a good mixture. So it's not like too blue. Oh, fluffy. No, 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 no. Here, here you go. Here you go. Jeez, you, you were just picking out. I don't usually have them eat this much, but I think there's a little too much of his body back here, but I'm gonna keep it very loose. Like I'm not even really drawing strokes as I'm just sort of throwing down some general motions. And by the way, if you guys did not know, we do have tons of photos of Fluffy on the Artcroft reference photo collection. It's on our Flickr page. So if you guys want to draw Fluffy at some point, I'm sure he would love it if you guys immortalized him in that way. I mean, I would love it. <laughs> and there are so many photos on that Flickr page right now because I just came back from spring break and I uploaded a ton of photos from Bryce Canyon. If you guys have never been there, it's this 
incredible canyon. I mean, it looks like a painting. It doesn't even look real when you go there. But check it out because some of the forms are bizarre. I don't know if I want to get that picky with this. I feel like, hmm, I don't know. Maybe I'm going to keep this one really loose. I'm not sure. I do really like his little feet. You guys see, you probably can't see right now, but I am going to get in here and maybe get some of the pink in some of his feet. Can you, Fluffy, you're going to need to like clip your nails. Your nails are, where, where are your feet? There we go. It's hard to clip their nails, actually. <laughs> like, you have to use this, like, special clipper, and, you know, they they don't tend to cooperate that much. Actually, the one who the one who's really hard to clip nails is Jub-Jub. Oh, my God, he's such a mess. Like, when we try to clip his nails, it's so hard. And I don't even do it. Like, my husband does it. <laughs> like, he does a great job with it. But, oh, man, he is not easy to do. You are just picking out, aren't you? We'll have to see. Maybe I should try to do a live drawing session with Gmo. <laughs> I have to figure out how to do that. Gmo is my axolotl, so he's in a tank. And he's downstairs, so I guess I'd have to move my whole setup and everything to draw Gmo. But it might be fine. Gmo's weird looking. He's a pink axolotl. And he is, the, the reason his name is GMO is because he's a GMO, genetically modified organism. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do some smudging. I don't do a lot of smudging with pastels, so let, let's just try it. I feel like smudging makes everything very, very messy, but maybe it's what I need right now. Maybe I'm doing too much of the direct work. That's kind of fun. I don't know. In general, I'm not a big fan of smudging because I think oftentimes it just makes everything really mushy, but oh crap. Now I like totally destroyed the eye. Shoot. Let's bring that back. Well, I don't know, but maybe that's cool because I can put the strokes like over. Oh, that's kind of fun because now I'm getting more of the texture back. Ooh, I kind of like that. Do you guys see? So what I did is I smudged it out to make it like very, very soft. Maybe I'll do the same thing up here. And then what I'm going to do on top of it is like just some very visible fluffy strokes like that. So that way it sort of shows the directional. Oh, you want more? Here you go. Here you go. There you go. And so now I'm going to put like some direct pastel stuff on top. Maybe that will be a nice, hmm. Neil is asking, do we have GMO reference picks in the Flickr? We don't yet, but we should. <laughs> so I'll definitely have to work on it. It's, it's tricky because the lighting isn't always great where he is. So I would need to figure out like, I, I might have to get, like, a backdrop or something to make that work out better. Gmo's a little bit trickier to do. Poor little guy. We had to put him in a little bucket. When we drove cross country, he was in a little bucket for, like, a week. We were, like, taking him in and out of hotel rooms. <laughs> it was very funny. Definitely an adventure, that's for sure. Maybe... I'm going to see if I want to just do some more severe strokes up here. I don't know. I'm kind of on the fence about this. I, I like the stuff back here. I, I feel like I, I don't know, maybe I need to do some erasing. I get this. Sorry. There's the top of my head. Oh, no, I don't think that's a good idea. Erasing with, with chalk pastels is, generally speaking, very, very tricky. Not easy to do at all. Let's give you some whiskers fluffs. Maybe a little more articulation on your little feet. 
his other toes are here they're like kind of buried but i do want to give him a little bit of that pink quality on there god he's loud can you guys like hear him chewing i feel like it's really loud <laughs> Maybe I'll do some like very delicate light work up here. I don't know. It's like part of me wants to draw gestural, but then another part of me is like, Clara, do the Durer thing where you draw in a way that humans should not be allowed to draw. <laughs> this is a pretty fun way to spend an afternoon though. Just chilling with my guinea pig, just drawing seeing how he's doing. Ulrika says, is it hard to work with pastels? It's hard because they're messy and they get powder everywhere. I, I, I don't find them easy to work with at all. I think they're fun and I think you can get right, right results, but they're not easy. I'm going to go back and I am going to actually remove, because I, I don't know, I feel like I like his body like grew. So I actually am going to remove some of this with this eraser. It's a mess. So actually I got to get rid of that. Ooh, doesn't that look weird? But it does look better. I think his, his body like grew too much. I think just the shape of it was not working out so well. Yeah, I got to, I got to cut that way back down. So let's, more like that. Just get that off into the trash. Yeah, that was a drawing issue. I don't know how I got his body to look so weird. All right, that's a little bit better. I just, I don't know. I feel like I sort of lost his form. You don't want to lose your form, Fluffy. And make sure you keep your form. Even more, yeah. He's just, how did he get so tall? <laughs> it's like, I don't know. I made his body like way too tall. I just gotta pull that off. That. That's a little bit better. Is that better, Fluffy? Yeah. Oh, that is better. Okay. It's still kind of a mess, but at least it, it's more <laughs> more your shape, Fluffy. I think it was not really his shape before. If I just go in and erase a lot of this stuff that is getting in the way. That's what I need. I think I just had all this like extra crap on the side that was getting in the way. Okay, let's dump that off. Like that. Jeez, how did I, I totally, like, blew Fluffy's shape. It totally disappeared. Try that again. Is that too much? Ah, I still feel like there's, maybe, maybe if I smudge it a little bit more? I don't know, I'm sort of having trouble with the contour here. Let's try that again. Get his a little touch of his ear on this side. I'm gonna smudge those edges and then maybe show more of the fur coming out like this. Although now it's getting really messy. <laughs> maybe he just needs more butt. <laughs> I don't know. It's a strange angle that I'm at. I get rid of this. I'm just trying to change the shape. Maybe he needs more arch of his nose. I think that helps a little bit. This is definitely one of those moments where you're just like questioning every move <laughs> that you make on the drawing. You're like, ah. <laughs> make the black more dramatic. I think we need more contrast fluffy. 
on your ear. You've been very cooperative, Fluffy. John Murph says, I had no idea you can erase with pastels. You can, but it's a mess. It's really hard. I really only do it when I'm trying to like fix something. Like you guys saw, I just tried to like take off all this extra space to like change the actual shape. But um, it's not advised. <laughs> it's what I'm trying to say. Like really you got to do it in, in moderation because it, it can create problems for you down the line because everything gets like really, really smeary and it's just, it's ugly. So yeah. And Ananin is asking, was that a kneaded eraser? It was not the eraser that I just used. This is Faber-Castell Art Eraser Dust Free. This is a really nice eraser. I just discovered it about a year ago because Faber-Castell sent me a bunch of them and I really like them. I mean, I really like those Mars Stadler pastels, but uh, this one's really good too. He got really tall. I don't know. Maybe just the angle got all funky because he kept changing. That's okay. Shermaine says, Fluffy is adorable. What kind of paper are you using? I am using a paper by Canson. And if you guys go down to the video description below, all of the links to the art supplies that I'm using in the stream are down in there. So if you guys want to find out exactly what I'm using. Walbert T says, the cutest thing is that it's all real life size drawing. I know, <laughs> it's so much fun. Simon is asking, did Durr ever use pastels? I find it hard to imagine. I don't think he did, not that I can remember. Most of the stuff he do did was engravings. He did silver point, lots of watercolors. To my knowledge, he did not do soft pastel. I'd have to look that up though. <laughs> All right. I don't know. I, I definitely know his shape is not, it, it's way off. I don't know if I'm going to bother to try to fix it. I don't know. I guess I should. <laughs> I was like, well, I could just write it off as this, but you know, it's like, you, you know, when you're, you're trying to get away with something. And I was like, yeah, Claire, don't do that. <laughs> Why? Why? Are you looking at me now? Oh, you do have this. Oh my God, you guys, his mouth is like dripping with celery. <laughs> it's like so wet. I'll have to show it to you guys when we're done. <laughs> I'm picking at this a little bit, but I don't like the angle of the eye. It's bothering me. So I'm trying to just draw over it. And I want him to look a little bit more soft and kind. I feel like the way I'm drawing him, it's a little bit too aggressive for his demeanor. So I want to change it for that reason. This was so much fun though, you guys. This is nice quality time with Fluffy and my pigs. Maybe if I give him like a little more butt, maybe having a little more butt, we'll, we'll fix having not enough of the head. <laughs> I think we should all draw animals more. That's what I think. I don't know. It's it's great because it's like figurative because obviously the animals, they have different positions and stuff like that. But another cool thing about it is that it's not a human. Like you, you guys notice that people definitely have like hangups about drawing people. And I think people tend to be way, way more judgmental when it's a drawing of a person in a way that they are not when it's an animal. So I feel like that's a big part of the appeal of drawing animals is just knowing you're not going to have that level of judgment that oftentimes does come with drawing a human figure. So I, I oftentimes like that a lot about drawing animals. Plus they're just so, 
fluffy. <laughs> <laughs> this is funny. Carolyn says, I mean, their shape changes so much depending on if the scrunch up or stretch out. Yeah, I mean, he's doing that so much. I guess what I'm doing right now, this is the finishing touches. I'm barely touching the paper, but I am trying to put in some more refined, more detailed strokes. I go back and forth. I mean, some days I'm like, oh, I want it super gestural and crazy and bold and assertive. And then other days I'm like, no, I want it very soft and refined and subtle. And I want all those moments in there. So I guess it just depends on what mood you're in, what it is that you want. Okay, Fluffy, let's get in more of your whiskers. More like that. John Murph says, I like what you do with edges. I typically leave a hard edge when I'm painting. Maybe you can help us with sfumato technique in paintings on live streams. Sure, we can absolutely go over that. I know edges are hard. I think a lot of people really want edges because they feel very clear cut and very concrete. And you do feel like things are very well defined. But the thing is, if you do too much of it, it really can make things look very, very flat, which is not so fun. Yeah, Fluffs, I don't think we can give you more. <laughs> Carolyn asks, how do you preserve pastel pictures? Can you fix them? You can. You can use spray fixative, but the one difference though is it does make it a little bit darker. That's my issue. I mean, really soft pastel drawings are an issue because they are very fragile and really the only true way to protect them is under glass, which is a big pain because it gets expensive after a little while. You guys want to see? You guys want to see his his really wet, wet mouth? <laughs> Good job, Fluffs. You did a great job with that. <laughs> All right, guys, please join me in the Art Prof Discord, I will be in the Art Alongs channel. The invite link is in the YouTube video description below. Subscribe to the Art Prof YouTube channel so you can continue to grow and develop as an artist. And a big shout out to our top Patreon supporters. You guys are phenomenal, giving us the resources we need to keep Art Prof 100% free and accessible to everybody. You guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me. I'll see you next time. Bye.